Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica here with Gareth Hamm, a G Money mustache and the Marshall Anatomy channel. I met Gareth at Maui Fit 2021 and we spent a bunch of time hanging out and he's a great trainer. Uh, what we are doing is Mark and Gareth's Excellent Adventure, the San Diego edition. So we came back from Maui Fit. I was in Hollywood doing some work and he called me up and said, we should do San Diego for two weeks and go to all the gyms in San Diego because that's where a bunch of people from Maui Fit are from. And we have come up with a, what are we calling this? the end of COVID adventure? Yeah, the breakout breakout adventure fitness extravaganza. So what we're doing is overtraining, like crazy amounts of overtraining, and we're super tired at this point. We're already a week into this. What I am doing is short programs in the morning to stay alive. We never throw away the stuff that we do that is really good. We are doing kettlebells, sub 30 minutes because there's so much other stuff going on. Heavy club, I'm doing 30 pound club, sub 30 minutes, but not putting the weight down. And arc, sub 30 minutes. The point of cutting my program down is that we're gonna live through it because what we are also doing is BJJ. We had also tried to do various kickboxing or Muay Thai. We're technically signed up for an MMA gym, so we have access to every single implement that exists for that, that type of training. But as far as classes that we've been taking, it's mostly BJJ. COVID has been kicking the Tarhooties out of the world for a good solid year, year and a half at this point, and everything has been closed, which means I haven't done judo or any type of stuff. Uh, have you done anything where you've been? No, even the much touted uh, gym in our apartment building has been closed ever since, uh, yeah, since COVID. It's horrible. We've been sticking and mostly talking about kettlebells clubs in ARC for the last year, but now that COVID is coming to an end, we're pushing it back into other types of training for fun. Uh, you can do these types of training forever, but it helps certain points of the year to go back and do conventional training as activation training. When you do kettlebell jerks, you get super good at jerks, but your pecs kind of atrophy because you're just not using them that much. I haven't been doing Turkish get-ups. I know I should be doing Turkish get-ups, but I haven't been doing them because I've been focusing on kettlebell marathon training. So we are limiting our morning training to 30 minutes and then we're doing BJJ. We're chasing that with 30 to 60 minutes of chest yeah. just to bring it back and 30 to 60 minutes of back just to bring it back. The more you do something, the better you get at it. Think about marathon runners they eventually look like marathon runners. Cross training helps you continue to look better. We use this strategy a lot in training for movies where we focus on the things that actually make you move good and improve your athletic performance. But at some point, we have to throw in some pretty training just to keep activation going. You can do as much of this or as little of this as you want. We're doing a bit of it now just because we haven't done it in a year yeah. and we're actually excited to do it. The other thing that we're doing is other people's gyms. So, so far we've been to, where have we been? Uh, we've been to S10 Strength Gym in Point Loma down in San Diego. And we've also been to uh, Brainstorm Fitness with uh, the great Mark Anthony also in San Diego. That guy's a great coach. Mark Anthony has the best voice of all time. He's from Trinidad. So everything he says is just in the coolest accent ever. And it really makes you want to listen to him, whatever he says. And to be fair, we've been spending a lot of time pretty much every day at uh, the boxing club at the La Jolla location. Great gym, tons of outdoor space, which has been excellent for us. They've been really accommodating too. Freddie, he's a brown Freddy. belt under, uh, at, with Atos. We were recommended that whatever we do by our friend uh, Will Safford from Will Safford BJJ. And he told us, whatever you do, find yourself a Atos, an Atos trainer. And uh, yeah, Freddie's been awesome. And everybody down at Boxing Club UTC has been amazing. So other people's gyms have been occupying a ton of our time. Yesterday, we were at Brainstorm Fitness for four hours with Mark Anthony. And he's just hammering through every type of equipment he has. He has a lot of equipment that's very gym specific. It's hard to cart around. So I don't know much about it because I travel all the time. I don't get to use all that stuff. We made some videos. We'll see if we can edit them and if they have good enough sound to use. Also the S10 strength gym with- uh, With Chris Daly, uh, really big on uh, the Z. Z Health Athletics, which is a super advanced, super complicated version of joint mobility and restorative movement. Also there they do 
Atlas stones, tire flipping. It's all brutal strongman gym stuff. They train. They train the Highland Games competitors from this area. And they're really, really, really creepy strong. They're huge, creepy strong dudes. You have lots of good ideas about brute strength. I don't focus on brute strength that much because it's not my job. My job is to make people move better for film or to train farmers. So I do less of that type of pure strength training, but I love those guys because Atlas Stones is kind of like, in log lifting, the basis of strength training throughout all of human history. Yeah. That combined with club training or mace training is just an unbeatable strategy. Run us through what you're doing here. So it's definitely for the top three is in order of least heaviest to most heavy. The Indian clubs, usually about five pounds, and that's a, an incorporation of both like yoga forms and the typical club swinging, just to warm up. Steel mace, I work with a 15 pound steel mace, and then the hydro core is probably closer to 20 to 25 pounds, and very similar movement patterns, lots of hinges, lots of pendulum swings, and overhead pulls. And then uh, as far as cardio type work, Obviously the BJJ, I've actually been taking private lessons with Freddie. I think I've done four in the last week. Great time, but absolutely kills you. And then I've been playing hockey my whole life and down at the UTC rink here, got to play at least once a week, no matter what. And your Muay Thai. Yeah, I, well, you know, mm. I kicked a heavy bag for a couple of days and then this, this weird thing started growing on the, uh, the front of my leg and uh, <laughs> I decided to take a few days off. So I'll, I'll be going back for plenty more of this as well, as well as the fact that we were training with Horizon Muay Thai on Maui. I got the opportunity to stop by. Shane ran me through quite a bit of ab conditioning and a bunch of stuff, so we're keeping that, that train going. And then obviously the Strongman, I've gone there a few times now to do the Atlas Stones, the logs and stuff, and I was really happy to be able to bring Mark as well because it's just so much fun. I love strongman training because it is farm boy training one-on-one. So you can see we are not doing the exact same things, but we have the same themes going. I'm doing heavy, medium, light. He's doing light, medium, heavy. And we cycle these systems every day. So one day I'm doing kettlebells, the next day club, the next day arc, and then I repeat it over and over and over again. We are definitely over training. I do not recommend that people do this, <laughs> yeah. but we're trainers. This is what we do. We go places, we find the best coaches in those areas, and we ask them what they think. Never trust a coach without a coach. If you have somebody and they think they know everything, they don't, they definitely don't. You should always be open to finding new information and asking different types of people what they think about different types of lifts, how they do it, how they do their progressions, how they run their programming is a huge, huge factor. I run mine a very specific way because I run mine as super science in an engineering equation. Other people like Brainstorm Fitness run theirs in a much more laissez-faire way, but they get mad results, but it's very highly coached. So at the end of every day, we're basically just completely exhausted, but our diet is mostly grilling out. What have we been eating? It's hardly, you know, tracking macros or anything, but absolutely every time there's at least two trays of broccoli, peppers, onions, asparagus, always broccoli and some of the other stuff. And then I like to do a bean medley. We've been doing refried beans mixed with a bunch of black beans. You know, you gotta get the ratio right. And then grilling steaks, sausages, chicken, typical stuff. But uh, also my, my wife is Japanese, so she does brown eggs, which is just eggs marinated in soy sauce. They're the same eggs you would get in ramen. They make them all the time and they're just hard boiled and absolutely delicious. And so we've just been popping those every couple hours just to stay sane. The food has been extremely, extremely, extremely good. The grilled onions is something that I'm entirely new to, just literally chopping onions up and straight grilling them as a huge portion of your meal. I haven't done that a lot. Not gonna lie, it's very good. I'm gonna keep doing it. And the brown eggs are clutch. Can't believe I didn't know that we were supposed to do that. I've just been eating plain hard boiled eggs for my whole life. I didn't know you could just dip them in soy sauce. This is the point of going places and meeting people is that somebody always has something that you can learn. And that is why we're alive. To learn, to continue to do things, to figure out how to be better at our jobs and figure out how to live better lives. We're gonna turn this probably into a series Mm -hmm. about adventure strategies because this whole thing is part of my overall adventure strategy life goal because that's the type of nerd i am and uh what else have we done oh we went to hyperfly so will safford told us to go to hyperfly hyperfly are the judo geese. 
that you see all the stunt guys in Hollywood wear, and I've never had a Hyperfly Gi, so I'm kind of like the least cool kid in the parking lot. So we got ourselves a pile of Hyperfly Gis, and of course, always wear your white belt. Uh, otherwise, you just don't think you're cooler than you are. You go to a new gym, you don't know what they're gonna do, wear your white belt because you are a white belt. Having a white belt mentality is the most important thing in training. Always be willing to learn mm -hmm. that's, and that's listen to what people say. Mark and Garrett's Excellent Adventure continues. Woo.